Oh, oh. Hey, well, a little nice again. I'll take that. Wait a little bit. Yo, what up, Ski? Just got out of work. Got in. Now I'm sitting here testing up all the measurements and stuff like that. And I already see on the uh, first thing right here, just based on the size of the threadings and everything like that, I'm going to uh, reprint this uh, stock adapter probably like at 102%-ish range. Because it looks like it would fit, but it's kind of tight. So, like, the way I'm looking at it right now is just sitting there. It's really sturdy fit, but I gotta sit there and um, reprint it out. What up, Chauncey? Oh, I was supposed to. I was supposed to message you uh, back the other day because uh, I wanted to see how much it would cost to uh, get that get that uh, thing done. I already know what I have to do for it, and I have no problems cutting out the back for it to fit. Also, also, is it just for um, Polestar, or you can uh, tweak it to work with the Inferno? If you can. Nah, wait on Chauncey. Set those there, but I know most people want to get this. Let's see where my little spatula. I got the teeth behind my damn phone. Um. One of the cool things I like about ooh, the supports I use, because I started doing more research on this, is the fact that um, the supports are much easier to take off versus standard uh, supports that I've been using for other little side projects. Let's see if I can get a good, uh, actually, what I'll do, because I know some people want just the, um, hmm. I know people just want to do, like, before and after pictures of this, so... What I'll probably do for them is just take a, a picture of it with the GoPro and then take another picture of it after I take the supports and all that stuff off. That way they've got a they've got what they want it. So, the supports that I ended up using for this are known as tree supports, and one of the cool things about it is where, when it uh, actually grows up as it's printing along, it actually doesn't actually attach to the, um, to the print itself. It kind of leaves like a small gap, so as you can see from underneath it right here, uh, it looks like it is attached, but it actually isn't. It's just got enough of a gap to where it's not actually, you know, in the way of such. So, 
go ahead and start breaking it down. As you, as you can see, it's so much easier to take out. It's not the fact that it, it's not the fact that it's hard to take out. I'm trying to preserve it that way, you know, for pictures. Because once it's all done, I know people want to see like the shell of it. And I'm already I'm already looking at it. I'm pretty excited. Yeah, gotta clean it up just a tad, but um, yeah, this is a start of, uh, of another project that I can do. I'm really glad I, that I found it, and because this has been a platform that I've wanted for a couple years now. And right now there is no full, there's no official AED version of this. I mean, there's a Springer, which somewhat has modified. And a few people have actually started um, printing these so that way they can actually um, use it. So my plan is to actually use uh, HPA and run... Uh, an air stock, preferably the uh, the Wraith Arrow, out the back, so that way I can run like an airline or CO2 right off of it and go from there. But uh, yeah, I'm actually really excited about how this came out. This was about maybe two days worth of printing, and I have no regrets on it. It's looking mighty smooth. I'm really enjoying this. It may, looks like they may have been a layer shift at some point. But it's not... doesn't look too bad. Like I said, this is like a prototype type thing, but if it works out, you know... Where are the hamburgers? Ouch! Hey, ain't no burgers right now. It's cold outside. But uh yeah, this looks this looks very promising right here. Oh, 5150, this is it right here. This is the actual lower. You know, I got to, you know, clean up the supports off of it a little bit cuz I did the actual like tree supports itself. So it actually came out looking really nice. Like I was mentioning earlier, it looks like right about here something may have happened, but on the inside it doesn't sh it doesn't look like it shifted too much. Well, yeah, I mean the only reason why it looks rough is because of the um, the supports that I actually used. Uh, this is my first time actually using this style support to actually print it out, and I'm actually probably going to start using that style. And a lot of my builds, mainly because of how easy it was to take everything off. But yeah, like it's a, it's a little rough, but I know this gives me a whole bunch of opportunity to actually fit a gearbox in here and actually see what all I can do. Because what I also want to do is potentially run the uh, Wraith Arrow stock on the back of this, so I can keep it in the um, keep it as a PDW.
Because, I mean, combine this with the BDW stock. Potentially running this. Nah, I won't be able to do it that way. Okay. Well, I was going to try and see if I can run this upside down like a like the actual um, MPX, but I'll, I doubt it's going to work like that. And plus, I need to adjust the regulator as well. Actually, I could run the regulator upside down. Ah, think about it. I could run it upside down. Okay, yeah. And then the other part I need to do is um, get this, the threaded adapter part. Because I buy a, because of this using um, mil spec threading, and this is more for airsoft threading. I'm at, I'm probably just gonna um, increase the size of this by like 101, 102 percent, just enough to have this screw in, and then run the line out and into the back of this. Like, I may mean, actually like dremel a hole big enough for the airline to go through, hook it up into the gearbox, and then just go straight through with it. Um, I'm going to go through and check all the parts, well, start printing up all the other parts for this, just to uh, see how much I can get away with just using, um, like, common airsoft parts to reduce the time I would need to print everything else out, like, for, like, for instance, uh, the mag release, I'm going to have to print this side out, but if I can use, like, a standard M4 one, I'll, I'll use that. Um, bolt release, I'll try and use an M41, uh, selector plate, body pins, definitely using that airsoft grip, I'm not, I'm not going to try and compromise that part, but yeah, this thing is looking very promising, like you said, it's a rough start, but like I said, it's the tree support, you know, stringing, which I can easily clean this up, because I cleaned part of it up along the way, but yeah, man, this is what it looks like so far, it's a, it's a good start. It's a damn good start. The upper, um, because of my, uh, because of my printer, it's an Ender 3. Um, I'm limited as far as, like, dimensions and stuff. So, I'm going to use the, uh, the shorter version, so the K, the K, K variant of it. And, um, if, if I can somehow get an extender onto my uh, onto my Ender 3 if I can make the uh, the Z axis taller I might go the full length one but uh, bills come first more than anything but yeah I'm actually pretty happy with how this came out this is worth the two days wait um, I know I'm probably gonna end up printing out another one of these with um, probably see why it kind of shifted right here a little bit. I'm thinking it may have something to do with when I was cleaning up or anything like that. But I'm, that's why I'm going to start uh, doing a lot more fun 3D printing. As, as far as... Uh, uh, as far as other projects right now, I'm currently sitting here on the waiting waiting for, for the AA-12. Um... The new nozzle has been brought in. Just me, me and Brian, we are working our normal jobs. And by the time we get done, we're just burnt out and things like that. And with that already in mind, I already know, you know, I'm not looking forward to trying to do the MP7 project. I'm not even sure if that will even be feasible at this time. Um, other people have already been working on the um, MP7. And they're pretty close to having theirs done, so I'm just going to let them have that. I, if they can do it, by all means, let them have it. But I also want to sit here and keep... We're excited for SGR-12. Yeah. Dude, trust me. It's been it's been a long year. It's been a rough year. Like, had 2020 not happened, it would have been done a lot sooner. But because everybody started working from home and uh, things started shutting down and everything... Shipping shipping wise has been like the hardest thing for everybody because um, the same people because I saw it on the actual uh, don't worry man it's sitting right here trust me but the thing is uh, I know somebody on the on the Facebook forum 
He was sitting here. He was upset that he's been waiting for 12 weeks. He was waiting for 12 weeks for his um, MTW, and he bought his on uh, Black Friday. And it was, and it just currently, it could just currently um, got put on the build list. Because I know I've got an empty, I've got another MTW that's on the build list currently right now. Um, he was upset because he waited 12 weeks when the website said uh, six to eight, and then it also even said you know due to COVID lead times it may vary from there as well. He didn't like that. So while he's waiting for a whole MTW, I'm waiting for just a nozzle piece. And I'm in that same time frame. And you would think that I would be upset with it, but I actually wasn't. Because I understand everything is just... Shipping is just ridiculous right now. Got taking a quick picture of all this. Sorry, other people wanted, wanted pictures, so just trying to have this all set up. And so once I'm done with the, uh, once I'm done with the live stream, I'll post it up. Yeah, international shipping? Oh, you can forget about that. Like, I'm glad I don't have anything that's doing uh, international shipping. Otherwise, you ain't never going to see that. Because that's where a lot of the, uh... The materials for the Infernos is that it's literally, you know, out on the boats. It's three months, yep, three months. Three months or more, yeah. It's ridiculous, and there's nothing that can be done. Like, there is honestly nothing that can be done to speed up the process in any way, shape, or form. It's just, no. I just grabbed a random gearbox because I know it's uh, TM compatible. So, you know, those that are actually here watching this uh, live stream are actually seeing me doing like initial fittings and stuff like that. Just gotta remove this screw. Which I can somehow do by hand. It's in my, I want one though. I need an MPX. Dude. Everybody, everybody in the airsoft uh, community wants an MPX. Like, somebody needs to sit here and do it. And I just, I just grabbed a random TM compatible gearbox, and it fits. Like, even if it does have that little offset, I'm not even, I'm not even worried about that. Because I already, I'm, I'm just looking at, you know what areas I can see here and modify and all that stuff. But yeah, this is like a C that's a SEMA gearbox, TM compatible, and it sits right in here. So I've got a lot of potential with this. Give you one. Once I once this is all set, like at least tested, because there are other people that are doing the same thing. Um if you have a 3D printer, I can definitely link you the the person who created the MPX uh as the printing file. And cause he he deserves the credit for it, not me. Uh, I don't know what I don't know what else to say. Like, just seeing this actually done, and I just grabbed a, a gearbox that I, I know will fit. It it looks promising, especially when it comes to the alignment, because the gearbox is right dead center for it. The only thing I know that I will want to really push this with is adding the air stock on the back to make this very um, worthwhile and that might be the only thing that would stop me right now for the sake of uh, durability and strength got the upper tube I only did the lower so far because I mean honestly I rather have at least one half of it done this way that way I could do all the fitting and all that stuff and if if it didn't work out, I wouldn't be out so much filament. But now that I have a lower done and it looks promising, what I'll what I will do is uh, print out print out one mag 
and print out the upper make it a stud buffer tube eh, I don't know it depends because I'm I want to use I want to use a stock adapter to place the arrow stock on the back to keep it give it that PDW look still and you know run CO2 off of it I mean I think most people are gonna try and run theirs as an AEG and if I mean if it can run an AEG it can run the standard HPA but I want to run the um, I want to run the actual air stock on the back of it. I'll probably end up using a gearbox that doesn't have as much external um, bits on the side like this one does. Oh, one of those little um, uh, pop metal Patriot ones. You do yours as a Euro Tactics. <laughs> it is doable. Because one of the cool things that I that someone actually pointed out is the fact that the um, the actual mag release doesn't sit on the in doesn't go through the ring like standard M4s. It actually stands on the outside, so you can actually like super glue the um, the actual mag release inside the build, and it'll stay put. So that's actually one of the cool things I like about this setup. I mean. Most a lot of companies already have 3D printers just to do this stuff, so I'm actually kind of surprised there isn't somebody making an MPX right now. Like, I would think maybe VFC, Elite Force, KWA. I can see them doing that, doing this, this sort of setup, but. Who knows? Who knows? Add mag drop to the mags. Oh, you mean like when I press the mag release it just just drops out right away? Is that what you're talking about? That is true, licensing. Uh oh, yeah, you're right, SIG. Uh who has SIG licensing? G G and yeah, I can see G and G. But you you are right. Um, well, I'm trying to think who has the Sig licensing. I want to say I want to say Elite Force has the license for Sig. I want to say that. Add you in. Yeah, sure. I'm waiting on you. There we go. Yeah, Elite Force has a licensing for SIG right now, to the best of my knowledge, but VFC has a gas blowback licensing. Well, I mean, it doesn't have to necessarily be gas blowback, because, I mean, no, I mean, you look at the TV. Just in general. And for the mag drop, I was talking about the one, you remember when Evike e and GG got together and they did that um, Banff rifle? Oh, when it shot that last round, it just spat it out. I I didn't really like that feature. No, I'm just because like, see if you can model it up and make it work. I, I like, it, it would just be weird, like trying to uh, when you're in the middle of a firefight and I, you just see this mag just drop out of nowhere. That would kind of worry me a little bit because you may end up losing those mags and you'll be in a wrong situation. With that, that would not work out for you. I'm looking at it more of like something that if I get really hardcore into the speed QB side of things, I want that feature because the moment that mag drops, I already have that next mag ready to go. I am just wanted to see if maybe model one up, you know, not even like seriously print it. Just take a look and see if it's even possible. Second opinion, I mean... I mean, just based on, like, the fittings of it, I would have to see um, where it sits in the G&G &G models. Because the way this one's printed up, it's literally based around the version 2 gearbox. Like, there's not, not much wiggle room around as far as, like, 
adding external things on the outside, aside from the basic, you know, selector plate and things like that. Yeah. The thing is, though, the G&G &G ones, it's all mag contained. Right. It's, it's mag contained, but their gearbox, the way their gearbox is set up, it's actually like somewhat of an overhang that actually has to press a button in order for it to drop. No, it's just a little trap door. Like where the last round goes out, that trap door opens and then the whole thing drops out. Yeah. It, it just it would just be weird. I'm well, I mean, for my sake, like, because I'd rather know where all my mags are for accountability sake because with me running my MTW, I have, like, I've modified ARP mags to use for my MTW, so my mags are, like, nearly $50 a pop. Yeah. I'm just, uh, I just wonder <laughs> if it's even possible at all, because if it is, then that means that, like, I could go and start doing something towards a speed QB build, and then, yeah, I'd have to buy them through someone like you in order to get them, but, you know, just so... So I'm like the only guy at the field. So even if you steal my Mac, you can't really do anything with them. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, I, and plus, along with this setup, I mean, it's got the rail on the back, but I want to run the PDW. I want to run the aero stock on the back of it. Like I said, do like an AEG, like the stud style. You know which one I'm talking about, right? I, I know about three different styles, the stud styles that you're referring to. Yeah, like something like that. Like if you can get like a G and G one or something like that, just so then you can throw an actual stock on there. Because honestly, the uh, for me personally, that ticket tinny rail thing, I always was just like, if I'm running something like that, it's because I'm gonna throw something weird on the side of it. Eh. Well, I mean, you got to realize that the MPX following the SIG design, they they put, yeah. you know, any sort of stock on the back for them just to run it. But what I'm trying to do is I'm going to probably run an airline straight through and to the adapter itself to run the whole setup. Oh, so you're going to have the adapter hooked up to the air stock in a way. Right. I'm trying to do a straight line through it. The only thing I could see being a problem would be the actual um, male end of this, of the aerostock, running into it. So I would more than likely have to find some sort of, um, or I might have to get a custom build, depending on how I do it. Because I, 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 as it stands right now, this this piece that I, I uh, printed, this buffer tube screw portion, it could fit the AEG Wraith no problem. Yeah. That's that's not a thing. I but I like the PDW style of the MPX. Honestly, the reason why I'm saying I want to throw a Euro Tactics on it is just so then it because for me growing up, everyone's been like, you got to be perfect. It's like got to be pure. For me, it's like. Fuck your purity, fuck your thing. I'm gonna do whatever the hell I feel like. Yeah. You know. Right, you know, you have the guy, the AK guys. Yeah, what is good? You know, AK is perfect. It's like it, it needs an update. It's been around since the 1940s. Yeah. You know, so that's kind of my thing. Is nothing is sacred. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like. I'll be the first guy that will throw a fucking CFG if I have the money onto anything. You know, dude be like, oh, I got my, you know, Polar Star or whatever. It's like, it's like, you can't run a Euro Tactics on a saw. What's the first thing I'm going to do? Try and find an yeah. adapter to make a Euro Tactics run on a fucking saw. Even though it's probably the stupidest thing ever, and I can only get a half mag out of it. You know? Eh, well, actually... Yeah, I mean... Well, no, because the Eurotac did use the standard uh, paintball, um, yeah. paintball setup. So you can run an ASA adapter, put plug in a remote line to it, and then run it out the back and boom, more air. Yeah, 
Yeah, but I mean, at that point, you might as well just run a straight line rather than. Yeah. Like, I might be able to get a look. Okay. Like, the reason why I'm looking at it is because I'm looking at it as something I can go out and play. And let's say I'm playing with you. Your gun goes down, even though your guns will probably last a hell of a lot longer than mine. I can just be like, here you go, buddy. Hand it to you as I'm pulling my pistol because I'm honestly just as comfortable with my pistol and a shotgun as I am with a rifle. Right. It's more of being able to pass it off and get someone else back in the fight a lot more than competitive for me. Yeah. So I might just run like a little 26 cubic inch tank, you know, like a paintball marker, you know, like a mag fed with the actual yeah. stock on it. I mean, because then I can just hand it off. I mean, that might piss off a bunch of speed QB guys and a bunch of Milson guys because it's like, oh, that isn't realistic. But it's like, if I just hand it to you, you know, which would you rather have? You know, some junk M4 AEG. I'm pretty sure you keep like six guns with you whenever you go to the field. But like, but like, let's say it goes down. Some cheap backup AEG that was like a hundred bucks and it sounds like it has a shim jump from hell. <laughs> or some V12 powered, you know, little PDW type deal, you know. Yeah, that's true. I mean, I know that well, is isn't most, most they're not. Most of my guns are. I put at least fifty to a hundred dollars in each one. Like it's never stayed stock forever. Yeah, I don't think I have a single gun that I've actually let stay stock for more than two weeks. After that, I end up like doing a tune up on it, throwing a, a metal tooth piston in, upgrade motor, tight bore barrel, different bucking. The only gun that for me that stays stock and it's still stock is a Tokyo Marie Spring Shotgun. The M3 Super yeah. 90. And that's really just because, like, that's, like, my last gun in my armory. You know, that's, like, everything else has hit the shit the fan, you know, or whatever. And, or I'm just feeling like people are being idiots. So I'll grab my TM shotgun and go to work with it. Yeah. But, but I don't expect it to go outperform, you know, everyone's polar stars, everyone's high energy. More of, I just want something stupid to be stupid with. Oh, yeah. I'm definitely going to try and start doing, like, see how many standard airsoft parts I could put on here. Because I know the body's going to be definitely 3D printed. Because this is just a standard M4 grip. Okay, so I can throw out your tactics on that. Thanks for answering yeah. that question. Yeah, and then... I uh, they have a ver there is a file variant that allows us to take MP5 mags, but if I'm gonna do with an MPX, I want MPX mags. I'm not gonna be like the King Arms PDW. They were like, cause I I saw a post on there. I saw I saw a post. I forgot who sent it. It was like, yo, check out my makeshift MPX, and then I literally hashtagged it, not an MPX. Because if it takes anything other than the MPX mags, it's not an MPX. I'm sorry. It just doesn't work. I got to have the realism. So no, I have to be okay. If you're doing a 9mm PDW, I don't care what 9mm mags you put into it. Okay. But the moment you say it's this gun, you better have everything for that gun. Right. Like, That's the point. Like with like you can't like, <laughs> you can't. Like okay, when LCT put out their LCT RPK sixteen deal, I'm like, that's not an RPK. Right. Because I went and looked it up, and it's like it's just an AK with a drum mag. It's an AK yeah. or with a drum mag. Because yes. I mean, look, I mean, a standard MP five MP five mag, that just doesn't look right. No, I'd be that does not look for like. If I was just looking for something to dick around with or whatever, you know. But I'm yeah. going to call it an MPX. I'll call it a PDW. I'll call it, you know, a 9mm AR. But it is not. Right. Like, like, give it a vague term. That way it's not given. That way it gets vague judgment. You want to get something specific, then you need to start being specific. Like, like it. Like, 
again, the whole DMR situation, you know. Yeah. If it's a 762 DMR, okay, all fine and dandy. That's all true. But when you say it's a, if you call your M4 a DMR, now you're sitting here like, okay, well, you've got to have certain qualifications for it to be considered a DMR. Otherwise, it's just a long barreled M4. Yeah, it's an M16. Yeah, basically. And then when you get to that, then you got to start being specific on the M16 because M16A4 is the yeah. one that was designated. And yeah. yeah. What, what up, Crazy Jack? Like, like I said, for me personally, it's like once you go and you say, I'm building this gun, you better have, like, I love it when people are like, oh, I'm doing a Lone Survivor impression. I'm like, oh, don't get me started with that. Like, oh my God. Yeah. I've seen so many people do that. And then all of a sudden, it messes up, or it's not exactly how they had it set, and then they have to backtrack on what they wanted it to be, and then it, it, it just it, it just falls apart. Yeah. I mean, like, I understand if you have an airline. Like, let's say I'm doing, like, a World War II Thompson, okay, an M1928, or not. Yeah, an M1A1 Thompson, okay. But you have your airline hanging out the stock or something like that. Okay, that's a functional thing. You're just right. Like, Function. Like, it's but, still a Thompson. It's just the fact that you drilled a hole in the stock so you could have your airline out so you could run the next. Right. And then uh, Crazy Ted said an SPR. Okay, you say it's an M4 SPR. Okay, that throws the whole DMR switch, uh, whole DMR discussion out the window because now you've said that it's a special purpose rifle. So there's no. Yeah. qualifications that it needs to be upheld by. The other gun for me that always kind of rattled me is people considering Barrett's as DMRs. I'm like, this thing is an anti No. The, I consider the Barrett to be a bolt-action snipe rifle. I'm I consider about, that's the only exception. I'm talking about the ones with, like, the fusion engines that, because they are semi-automatic, they should be on. Oh, yeah. That, that's when you really start kind of treading lines on that one. But it's, in military here's aspects. Here's, here's how I'd run a Barrett if I was part of an event operator, okay? That's right. Bolt-action sniper rifle under rules. However, you can only have one round a second. So you can't just spam it. You're just boom, 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 you know? Well, I mean... Um... Yeah, once at least one to two second delay per shot. That's why I'm saying like a one round a second rate of fire cap. Like if you have a fusion engine in it, it's semi locked one round a second. If you have a jack in it, semi automatic, semi -lock, one round a second. Right. Because don't sit here and try to spam it because now you just completely ruin it for anybody else who's running an actual bolt action. Yeah, appreciate appreciate it, man. This is a, a custom shirt that got made uh, with my logo on the front, and then I've got Toka Tech on the back of it. You should wear that to a speed soft tournament. What? My shirt? Yeah. Just I don't know, I about walk onto the field like you're a boss, you know, run an MTW built out. I mean, like, the amount that I've spent on my MTW, it's just ridiculous. Like, money wise, I've spent so much on it. Just for aren't, parts. Aren't they like a thousand dollars just one, or like seven hundred dollars for just one, something like that? Uh. Not for yours. No, no, no. Mine, mine is mine is way up there now. No, like, I'm, I'm, my, I'm talking, the price I could put on mine, I could buy three more MTWs. No, I'm saying like if I were to go and buy one, like just straight from Wolverine right now, I'm looking at about a thousand dollars, right? Uh no, I would say like the the billet series would probably put you around seven hundred actually. Okay, but still, I mean, at seven hundred dollars, you know, for me personally, I just never really got into Milson that hardcore, and the MTW for me just never really, you know, hit that urge. I understand people that like. Oh, actually, it, so. actually, six hundred. For the standard carbine with the Inferno engine, uh, $615. Ooh, nice. And then you can go cheaper um, if you get the uh, the uh, Reaper M. 
because there's no electronics, so it's cheaper. Yeah. I mean, I was looking at getting the Wolverine Bolt mechanical for the um, for the Kima. Yeah, like considering the fact that I have sat here and got a lead lead star arms, skeleton arms, AR upper, and I went and got a second Second Amendment ten inch M lock rail. Yeah, I mean, like you're just absurd. I mean, I'm just gonna be straight up honest. You have way too much money for your own kid. You should just send me some. <laughs> Please, I think like just my upper alone could cover a full, a full MDW itself. Yeah. Because the the upper was two hundred, two hundred and twenty. The rail was about another two hundred, and then throw in the stock, throw in the PDW stock. Because I have this stock, I have the arrow stock, the first gen arrow stock. And then I had a CO2 stock, which then I sold to somebody else because they wanted one badly. And then I'm going to get another CO2 stock to put on here. And I have two, two 33 gram conversion kits. Uh, I had the Electrical Reaper and the Electrical Inferno, but people wanted to trade their uh, Reaper M's out. And I said, sure, I'll trade them because then... If I don't feel like running my tank, if I don't feel like running the um, my CO2 cartridges, I just swap swap the engine out, have the airline coming out, boom, I got an airline set up. Yeah. Oh, damn. Yeah, some places don't allow um, stuff like that due to gun laws. It's really, it, it is really ridiculous. Like That's why MTWs are mostly just in the U.S. I mean, I know there's some in other countries, but... Well, I mean, the guy who got me, who inspired me to do the, the skeletons upper, he's in Thailand. Yeah, I mean, I'm not saying that there aren't. I'm just saying that it's usually more of a pain to go and ship one out. But, I don't know. Uh, it it all depends on their uh, country laws as far as the jewel limits. That's why a lot of um, a lot of places they have them they have them under like one jewel or something like that. Yeah. Yeah, civilian thing. That's what it was. Yeah, he's the one who uh, got me going like that because I sat here and saw all of his up, and I was already like two beers in. So I turned and looked at my PSA upper. Then I started sitting here brainstorming and doing some test fitting. And then the very next day, I went and got me another upper. <laughs> and I spent about an hour milling, and I got it working. I seriously thought if I did do an MTW, I wanted to do a California compliant build. Oh, I think somebody's already done one. I'm pretty sure that somebody has done. I think somebody has done a California compliant build with the featureless, featureless grip, um, and a few other things as well. The featureless stock. That, yeah. Like I'm thinking, use the Thorsten, but then if I build something like that, I'm probably going to go Daytona rather than MTW. Like. To be honest, just because, like, if I'm going to do something like that, I'm going to go and build, like, a featureless light machine gun, pretty much, you know? Basically. So, and, like, a bar, pretty much, like a modernized 5.56 five, bar. <laughs> so it's, Got it. Hilarious. So it's, like, an AR, st like, AR receivers, but with, like, the, um, like, a drum mag. You don't know what I guess the you're fuck you're talking about, bro. There's, well, I can kind of side with them because the Daytona builds that I have seen, they've had a very, very long break-in period. And I think, I think, I don't know if they're still in production right now. They are. It's just their lead-up is way longer. Like, the M okay, if you're buying a Daytona gun, it's because you want something that is just ludicrous. Okay. You're not going to be outperforming some dude with a customized bolt action sniper rifle. Hell, you might not even produce, up, shoot some, you know, AEGs. But the thing is, if you're open fire with one, everyone ducks heads. I swear, everyone ducks heads. Because every one that I have used, it's, it's the same with you open up with a gas blowback with an HPA tap in it. 
after the first four or five rounds, people are just like, fuck this and drop heads. Yeah, and also, um, Daytona guns are not really meant to go beyond the realistic rate of fire of whatever platform you have it in anyway. Yeah. So you're not going to be expecting, like, 20 rounds a second like a Vector Gen 2 That's about versus – um, fire for, like, a short-stroke AK or a short-stroke M4, you know? Oh, no, like, even a short-stroke setup is, like, no higher than 16 rounds a second. I've seen them push up to 20, but, like, that's, like, the top out for them. I mean, if I build one, it's... I've, if I've I barely build, seen any of them go past 18. I mean... <laughs> the range of it. <laughs> that's just, oh, the 5,000 break-in round. Oh. That's just for deployment, okay? If you're using one, you shouldn't be using it as a, like, fixed position gun. Like, you should be using it to go and move around. That, yeah. That's, that's Another thing is it's a mechanical HPA setup with full auto. Yeah, I know there's there's stuff like the N7, there's stuff like the Reaper. But if I'm going to go and grab something, I'd much rather have it terrify the living shit out of everything for the next mile rather than be sitting here and be like, oh, well, my buddy over here just got hit. And it sounds like a polar star, but it's shooting so slow. Yeah. That's why. Well, it's too heavy. That, that's pretty much me with my... Uh... With my uh, vector, like they they hear the uh, rate of fire, but I run a recoil system in it, so they know it's me. Yeah, I mean, like that's the thing with Daytona kits. Like they're they're old. I know they're not they're not the best for everything, but if you're grabbing a Daytona, it's not for like top end performance. It's more just to have. Yeah, you've used a Daytona gun, haven't you? Like Yes. Gun. Yes, I actually have, yeah. So tell me that you do not get joy out of just start mag dumping them. I did, like, because I was used to it. But then after a while, I like he said, it's the range that you're set on, and I knew that I could get more range out with of, other means, out of, out which kind of kinda led me to getting the vector and adding the recoil to that. Like, the recoil is just more for me to have fun with, you know, and I can still get that same performance. Yeah, I mean, I understand why people don't like them, but personally, I'm just like, if I'm going to get a gun, like, to build as a fun gun, then I am going to build a fun gun. Right. Like, I don't care about the performance, especially because I'm out here in Hawaii. Most of our fields, like, the longest range you're actually shooting is about 250 feet. Yeah, that sounds about right. Even though we have a sniper class, in quotations, with a minimum engagement of 100 feet, it's literally just guys standing on the back wall with bold actions. <laughs> Which, I mean, it's like, it's no fair for them because I'll go out there with, like, an M4 carbine or like even my pistols and just start dumping on them because I can hit them at 120 feet. Right. Like over here, they if you, especially because the fields are so small, if you hear someone open up with a Daytona gun on the other side of that wall, he's it's not oh he's 150 feet no he's literally right on the other side of that wall. I have before. It's fucking hilarious. Did I ever tell you about Lord Chungus, Dion? <laughs> I I think I, I think I recall it. It was a fully automatic KJW KPO6 that I ran oh, HPA with a red dot on top. And I had it engraved with the fucking meme version of Bugs Bunny. Like I love that thing. And honestly, I'm not rebuilding it, but it's a matter of if I start rebuilding it, just money and time and just kind of not really my thing anymore. Like primary stuff right now. Not, you know. Yeah, 
I'm I'm actually glad I used tree supports for this thing. Like, I think that's probably like the best thing that people have done as far as 3D printing and advancements. Because it, it, it made everything just come off so much easier. Nice. Like little frills and Irish pennants everywhere, but I got it. Oh. But keep me updated on that gun, on that receiver yeah. kit, and let me know if I need to get a different nozzle or whatever for it. No, it's supposed to take standard. You're supposed to be able to drop in a standard M4 gearbox and everything. Because I would be interested in one, even if it does end up being the MP5, MPX. I mean, MPXK. Yeah. <laughs> like yeah. Only because the the size of my three D printer is the only reason why I would print the uh the K version. If I get the um Z extended, like extend the Z for me, then I could do it. I could do the taller uh full size one, but that might be a little later on down the road. I e I'm gonna make sure all my rent and all that stuff's paid for before I decide to try and extend this thing to be taller yeah but what i'm saying is keep me updated on it because i'm seriously okay. thinking about doing a euro tactics one just so i have the first one okay i mean i yeah like i've done enough 3d printing to know like the infill because i did 100 percent infill on this thing this thing is sturdy because i'm worried about dropping it like especially more towards the rear like i don't want to snap that part of the receiver yeah, I mean, I could see that happening, but I mean, worst case scenario, I just don't play with it anymore. I get started up, I get, I start up a new one yeah. on Sunday or Saturday night, and it's ready by Monday night. And then you just drop everything in. Yeah, yeah. that's why I run the HPA setup because then that'll determine how much effort am I going to be putting into this if something breaks and I got to reprint a whole entire thing again. Yeah, just keep me updated with it because I kind of got evil ideas with it that are going to I already – I've been had evil ideas as soon as I saw that someone had made the actual body kit for it. The only other thing would be I would want to have the receiver changed just with my stuff. Mark can fit rather than – I think it's I am on this one. I, I actually like having that right there because it, it gives credit where credit is due. No, but what I'm saying is like put like – like, I like having my stuff custom marked with name just so people don't take it. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I don't care if Baker's name is on it, but I want my name on it. So if someone goes and grabs it and it's like, oh, this is mine. I just got it. Where'd you get well, it? Well, I mean, true. But then again, not a lot of people have a 3D printer and is willing to do donate that much time and effort into doing something like that, too. So, yeah. I'm just It'll be very hard pressed, especially once I finish with my modifications on it. Having a PDW stock, printing out because I got to print out the mags too. Yeah, like I said, just keep, if you do get it figured out and stuff, let me know because I am interested in doing one. I'll need the receiver okay. set and the mags definitely, and also just DM me how much it would end up being. Okay. Because I have no problem with paying for it. It's just a matter yeah. of, you know, like I said, I'd want my name on it just to keep people from fucking with it, you know. Yeah. But, I mean, uh, you could probably just sand out that layer, but then again, I'll I'll see what else can be done. I mean, like, even if it's on the other side, you know, I don't. Yeah, I mean, no, it's only on one side. The MI is only on one side. The other side is unmarked. Okay, then just put my name on the other side. I don't care. I mean... Yeah, like, I'm, I'm going to put my decal on this half right here yeah. when I run it. I mean, that's what I'm saying, though. It's like, I'd much rather have my stuff marked with my stuff so people don't fuck with my stuff. Yeah. Yeah, and I'm, I'm going to be doing some crazy things with this thing anyway, so... Yeah, just let me know when you get it, like, figured out and get a functioning one, like... Yeah. Shoot. What I'll probably end up doing starting off... I'm just gonna make this the uh, electromechanical setup with the Reaper, with the Reaper electromechanical, just to get it started, and then I'll swap over to the Inferno and all that stuff. I mean, either way, I'm not really as worried about that because I'm not gonna be dropping in a Wolverine product. I'm gonna probably either go Polar Star with the V12. Yeah, 
the, the gear as long as the gearbox v2 yeah. version to a tm compatible it'll drop right in yeah and that's not what i'm worried about i'm more like let me know when all the teething stuff is kind of sorted out yeah then yeah because i'll be interested in that but i gotta go i gotta jump the shower and i gotta head off to work because fuck my life yeah, I literally, I clocked out, and I was like, I came by over here for lunch. I'm like, it's done! Okay, this dude just went and did the puke emoji on the V12. I know it's not the best, but, I mean, <laughs> that's what I got it for. It's actually worth it. I mean, you get it for a hundred. Oh, some of the stuff was going through, I didn't even realize it. Uh, the base gun right here, this is the uh, MPX. Throw a suppressor here without an end cap. Uh, well, I've tried that whole, uh, well, it, yeah, if you want to go ahead and go, man, you can go ahead and go. Just, um, the whole deal with the V12. <laughs> Those suppressor without an end cap on the MTW. I can't do that because somebody said, wow, my gun's quiet. And I had, a, um, a 3D TAC. I had a 3D TAC, uh, suppressor that I printed out from, um, Colt 3D. And my gun was still pretty quiet for that, so I couldn't really do anything about that. Uh, don't get me wrong, Daytona's fun. I care more about... Right, like I said, Rocka, JW, Full Auto, Chase. Try for the same maker. It was just released from Project. Yes, I have an Ender 3 uh, printer. That's what I use. Looks really good. Yeah, appreciate it, Deranged. I may... Depending on how the mags come out, I may send one over to you to range, or at least send you the file, send you that uh, MP the shell file for the mags. That way you can actually print um, another one of these like you did for my MP5. Because I would definitely rock having some of these on there. But yeah, uh, so far, just by looking at the lower, because I just grabbed a SEMA gearbox, and I knew that that was pretty close to being TM. It fits in just fine. You know, you maybe only have, like, you know, just, like, the selector plate or anything like that. But as far as, like, other external hours, you might be able to get away with a little bit, but not too much. Grip fits on just fine. Uh, like I explained earlier, uh, I want to run the uh, arrow stock on the back. That's my in-game goal. If I can't, I'm not too worried about it. I'll be happily, you know, running the airlock mm -hmm. down the bottom and, you know, mm -hmm. it. Um, the creator said, uh, have you also design stuff yourself for printing? Uh, not right now, as far as designing stuff for myself. Uh, I work way too many hours to try and dedicate time to do, like, CAD designing. I was hoping to be furloughed all last year so that way I could dedicate time to it but unfortunately I was uh, essential and it kind of killed all time I would have because by the time I get home I'm just like dead to the world the filament I am using well here because I actually have uh, I have other ones is uh, WYZ works it's uh, just plain PLA uh, as you can see this is the uh, transparent filament I I did some uh, I did some fun interesting testing with the uh, transparent filament and this is one of them one of the things I did just for fun and I, I'm actually pretty glad I did it so this max stand I did just for the shiggles is only five percent infill on it so it is just about transparent as you could possibly get. Maybe if I did like some wet sandpaper. If I did wet sandpaper, it would probably um, be crystal clear. Uh, do I have a light? Yeah, there we go. So I got one of those little electrical things. Like that is how clear it is. So I've been using a few, I've been using uh, that just to get stuff sitting down. And then I also just recently received the Rage Custom wall mounts. And I could pretty much mount that stuff anywhere. 
but I just don't know where I want to mount mine. Pull this out. Like I said, I've just recently got these. No, it's not a glow mag. But, however, they do have glow in the dark filament. They do have glow in the dark filament. So I've got a Rage Custom uh, wall mount. The question is, I'm trying to figure out where I'm going to mount this. And I want to mount them in funny. Everybody's going to mount them on their walls, like, you know, a traditional wall mount. But I kind of want to make this fun. Like, I want to be able to, I'm going to probably have it mounted, like, sideways while it's, you know, my MTW's hooked into it. And mount it, like, sideways on a wall like that. Or make sure it's fully locked in. Yeah. Have it fully locked in and I have it hanging upside down somewhere. Or inside a box or something like that. Yeah, I plan on, what I want to do was kind of like put like uh, an LED light in here and uh, just have have it sitting there just being all pretty and stuff like that. And one of the other reasons why I got the transparent filament, you know, was to see how the patterns of the infill works. And it was actually a pretty cool experiment because I did one of these with 100% infill like I normally do. And... Uh, I saw like the actual pattern on how it was and it was really cool. Was about to ask about the mounts. Yeah, they're Rage Custom um Rage Custom mount, a wall mount. They just released it. They just released it uh this past weekend. And I've got two of them. I just got to figure out where I'm going to put them in my apartment or if I should just hook it up to my uh carry tote and actually have it mounted on the inside of it like, like that. I think that would be a pretty cool thing to do. Mystery box type vibe. Yeah. Like, because I want to put, I may want to, like, drill it to my tote. And then when I lift my tote up, the gun flips up with it. I think that would be pretty cool to see. Are they 3D printed? They, yes, they are. I just had my work up since I have my MTW. Duh. Yes, it is 3D printed. And it's actually a pretty solid material that they use. I think they use ABS polymer, I believe. I have to double check on the site, but they also have all the hardware mounts, and all the hardware mounting um, things and the instructions on it. The mixture box vibe type. Yeah, like, I think what I'll probably do first off is to have one mounted on the wall somewhere. I'll probably have a... Buy a mystery box and sell it or build it, yeah. You have an air stock you'd sell me? Currently, no. Um, my Gen 1 air stock, I plan on trying to put onto the MPX project that I'm going to be starting up on. Um, if it doesn't work, I'll, I'll probably get back to you on it. But as of right now, no, I don't have any extra air stocks. That mystery box would be dope. Uh, Y'all might have to send me, like, send me some ideas on a mystery box type thing. Was eyeballing them, but we are not allowed to just mount our soft stuff here. And then. Oh, yeah, that, well, that's where, that's where the creative part comes into play. Like, what's a good example? Like, okay. So, one thing I said I was going to do, like, while I was just talking about, was have, like, the actual mount... On the, on the underside of my tote or something like that so that way just hook the gun up on the inside of it and then I can just close it up like that so you may see like the screws and stuff like that I can put like little uh, for uh, I'll put like little bolts or something like that to smooth it all out and then when you open it up it does kind of like that Call of Duty mystery box that just hangs right there so that's something I, I'm probably going to end up doing for myself it would be a good way to showcase um, builds when you're on the travel. that That's just crazy though. Like different uh, countries have different rule sets. I know it sucks, but I mean like that's like I, like I said, that's where you can get real creative with it. Uh, you can have it hanging on the ceiling or things like that. You know, be, have fun with it. Like I said, I'm still trying to figure out where I want to mount mine. 
One will definitely be, you know, standard wall type for showcase, because I definitely want to showcase the MTW when it's here inside. Uh, as far as when I'm on out and about, if I don't have an actual mag stand available, I'll probably put it in my tote, have this thing mounted upside down or some sideways like that. And it'll be good to go. Uh, I know on another stream, well, I'll probably do a little YouTube, an uh, actual YouTube video on. I will discuss everything that I've done with my MTW um, from, you know, from top to butt of all the parts that I've got on it and all the things that I did. Opinion on using only 0.48 gram BBs for all my guns. Um, some cases is perfectly justifiable. Like, if you're using a sniper rifle or a DMR and you got to reach out for those ranges, that's perfectly fine um, because you're also accounting for the jewels and stuff. CQB, that's more on, on the gray line, more of a dickish move. Um, especially, especially when you're, you have max uh, BB weight limits. So part of me is saying you need to really keep an eye on the jewels of it to stay in line with your field limits. But if your guns are only set to only run that high, like you can't run any lower, you need to kind of, you know, readjust your builds for it. Because most, most of the time I'll run .3s or .32s. Uh, only in national events will I run at most .4s. And that's not because of, um, you know, trying to hurt people or anything like that. It's more of I'm trying to have the least amount of wind resistance on my BBs so that way I can actually shoot the longer ranges. Yeah, jewels are good. Um, well, if, if that's all good, I'd just be more concerned about the pricing of, of ammo. Like, ammo prices for normal ARs is expensive. BB prices are just as expensive and getting up there as far as bottles. Like, I'm like trying... When, even when I'm at the local, even when I play local skirmishes, I try to limit myself to like two mags, at least for the time being. So two MTW mags, about 250 rounds. So I'm using like one, like half of a, a CO2 cartridge. And the other half is more for like people wanting to test out my guy or they're thinking about running HPA or things like that. Or people wants to sit here and actually be like, hey... I want to run your gun. I want to, you know, see how it shoots and things like that. Then I'll let them run my gun. I'll give them, like, an extra CO2 cartridge. That's why I, I, I like having that. And that's why I also, um, on my air stocks, I have the um, ASA adapter with a 90-degree elbow on it. So that way I can actually hook up an actual tank to it and let them run it that way. That way they're not just uh... a... <laughs> Well, I'm just mag galore in the field. <laughs> nah. Like, if I had way more bottles of BBs than I know, then sure, I'll, you know, I'll go a little ham on it. But I'm semi-only. No, see, no, that's just too much. No. Like, I can't run. There is no way I can run that many mags on me. The most I will run on me personally would be three in the front, two on the sides, two on my belt if I have, like, a belt set up for it, which most of the time I don't. I like mobility over capacity. And then one in the gun. So I carry less than 10, but you run at 26 mid-caps? You need to send me a picture of your full loadout. Yeah, 26 mid-caps, so roughly about, yeah, so 26 mid-caps, I'm assuming about maybe 150 rounds, that's a lot, <laughs> that is, no, I can't do that, I'm, you, you, you don't need to send me a link, well, send me a photo of you holding all 23, 28 mags, that's some Optropic op, Thunder that you see on Evike, 
that's what I that's the first thing I think of you running all that. There's there is no way you go through all those all those rounds like that. Like it must be just straight full auto or something. I don't know. That is just crazy. Thirteen to fifteen mags. Uh, uh-uh, I I can't. No, I can't. I can't. I don't. Thirteen to fifteen mags on a skirmish. I do like three. And I managed to have to refill those some. Man, no, I can't. No, no, no. Sem- semi only. Well. I pick my shots, so I'm not gonna sit. I am not going to sit here and just spam the, the finger all the way through. I can't do that. No, I can't. I'm I'm I run semi only. I run two to three mags at most. I don't even go through a full mag in a skirmish. Yeah, you're gonna have to show, you're gonna have to send a picture of that, or or like m- make that a post as a loadout and tag me in it. Like that is just ridiculous. Like running, I can It's hard for me to see that. Like leg holster, like uh, on all around the belt. That that is that's just ridiculous, man. Uh, <laughs> I can't. I, I still can't. I, I all I see is you were twenty eight mags. I just see Evite Evite and Matt with all those mags on his on a plate carrier with his gun that has all the attachments and everything on it. That's what I think. That is what I'm seeing. Well I I'll stay on for that. I'll, 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 I can stay on for a little bit longer just to see that. Or, better yet, uh, <laughs> yeah, I think he has to stack molly pouches, too. Uh, if you take the picture, take the picture, post it on your, on your page, and tag me in it. I'll tag Deranged and the Crazy Tech in it as well. Because that's 28 mags, or 26 mags is ridiculous. But, um, yeah, yeah, put it all on, go live, I want to see this, I got to see this. Uh, so, in short, uh, in conclusion, the lower of the MPX, just by first initial testings, looks very promising. Yeah, D- yes, please DM me that, because I got to see this, but... This is looking very promising. I like. I made sure that it was 100% infill, so it's going to be pretty sturdy. If I'm going to have to do any modifications, I'm going to have to take the Dremel to it, and hopefully not come up with another third eye again. Uh, overall, I am really going to be having fun with this project, and hopefully I'll get started working on the other parts uh, this week. Actually, I might get started working on it tonight, and hopefully have something working by um, this weekend. If not this weekend, next weekend, because I want to, you know, brush this up and you know make it look nice and pretty for y'all. So, on that note, yo, what up? On that note, I'll go ahead and cut the stream. I'll post up the before and after pictures for everybody that wanted that instead, and I will continue working on this. So I will catch all of y'all later.